Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ash Bennington. At Real Vision, we always want to give you the most up-to-date information. I filmed this conversation with Sandeep on August 10, 2021. During our conversation, we talked about ZK scaling solutions. Those are zero knowledge scaling solutions. Three days later, on August 13, Polygon announced a merger slash acquisition of the Hermes network. If you want to learn more about the technical details of the merger and about zero knowledge solutions, zero knowledge rollups, there's a long thread on Polygon's Twitter feed at 0x Polygon, dated August 13th, which is the day the merger was announced. I hope you enjoy this conversation. Sandeep, welcome to Real Vision. It's such a pleasure to have you here today to talk about Polygon, which is one of the most requested protocols uh, that our audience is interested in hearing about. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me here, Ash. Very excited for this discussion. Sandeep, just to begin with, let's talk a little bit about the genesis of Polygon. Uh, this is, as I said, one of the most requested protocols that people are interested in learning about. We should say we're predominantly going to be talking about the Ethereum ecosystem here today uh, that Polygon runs on. Give us a little bit of a sense of the background for Polygon. What was the challenge you were looking to solve? Yes. So we started back in 2017. Uh, it's only now uh, in the last, like, you know, eight, 10 months or one year, people have started to know about us more. But we have been, uh, you know, building this uh, protocol and, and things around that and the developer ecosystem for quite some time. So we started back in 2017. Uh, the great thing was that, uh, uh, you know, all of us uh, co-founders were techie and we were engineers. Uh, and, you know, that is one thing, one theme that keeps coming back because a lot of infrastructure protocol in the blockchain ecosystem are built by researchers who are not like engineers, uh, you know, per se, uh, you know, for them. And they are like very much into the, uh, what do you call like, you know, the 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 kind of uh, the tech idealism and, and things like that, right? We started as engineers where we were already ourselves building apps on, on Ethereum, right? And uh, we were seeing all these projects like, you know, raising tons of money back in 2017. And then, you know, their mm -hmm. ideas or the white papers looked like completely, uh, you know, what do you air castles or things like that. And, uh, you know, but then the problem was that there are no solution available uh, to have scalable D apps on Ethereum. And that's when, uh, you know, we uh, like my other co-founder, Jenti, he he started to work on Plasma a bit. And, you know, we realized that there's a big, uh, you know, gap in the industry. And that this is going to be like this because a lot of people wanted to create Ethereum competitor and all that. Where, whereas it was very clear in our minds that uh, Ethereum ecosystem is just too, too big and it has a, you know, like a perfect storm. Uh, you know, back in like 2016, the DAO time, and then 2017. And then after that, also, we have seen that NFTs and DeFi and all that, all those things. So we engineers, like we, uh, you know, set on this journey to kind of set and build, a, you know, mass adoption to enable mass adoption of dApps on Ethereum. And that's when we started with Matic Network. So Matic Network was a plasma uh, based technology to to scale Ethereum on a layer two. So basically, uh, what layer two is that you know there are two ways of scaling a blockchain. And when I say scaling a blockchain, because blockchains are these decentralized databases, you can already imagine the single task which can be done by one computer. Instead of that, multiple computers are doing that task, right? So it is it inherently becomes a bit uh, you know complicated to do a lot of computation on it, right? So so you want to scale blockchains. How do you scale the blockchains? One way is that you, on the layer one itself, that means the blockchain itself, you try to do a lot of changes. All of you guys must have seen, for example, this recent London fork and the upcoming uh, you know, proof of stake and all those things. All of these technologies are trying to scale Ethereum on the layer one. And there are multiple other layer one attempts also to scale blockchains on a layer one. Now, what we started with Matic Network is we wanted to build a layer two blockchain, which means that the Ethereum blockchain remains as layer one, and you have this layer two blockchain, which kind of does the computation and puts it back on Ethereum. So that's where we started with the with Matic Network. 
and uh, you know uh, we 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 have been very uh, extensive in the developer ecosystem we speak with like hundreds and hundreds of d apps and we it was very clear in our mind that uh, by this january that there is no one solution fits all approach and uh, that's when we expanded matic network into polygon which which is a multi chain ethereum scaling solution basically you have multiple chains on top of ethereum right. to provide scalability on ethereum yeah, so let me just uh, jump in, uh, particularly for our non-technical viewers, viewers who may just be investors who are trying to get their heads around the significance of what you're doing and why it's generated so much buzz in the Ethereum ecosystem. Uh, first, as you said, you are practical guys, you are engineers, uh, you're not researchers, you're not professors of computer science. You went in because you saw a real problem that needed to be addressed. Let's talk about what that is the challenges that exist with Ethereum. Let's talk about the scalability issues. Let's talk about the fee issues, just so people can get a sense who may not really understand what the challenges were that you were trying to solve. What did you see and why did you feel the need to address it so urgently? Yes, so on Ethereum, like if you want to go by the specific numbers, let's say, so the vision of Ethereum is to become the global decentralized computer, right, which runs some business logic. Now, uh, with this, uh, uh, you know, this, 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 this Ethereum, like the the number of transactions, like it expects to be a global computer, but the number of transactions uh, per second on Ethereum is roughly around thirteen transactions. So imagine, like this is a global computer, but it can perform around thirteen transactions per second only right now which is a big scalability concern. And due to that, uh, because the you can process only 13 transactions per second and obviously the demand is too high, so then a lot of people are ready to pay large amounts uh, to, to, to get their transactions included in the blockchain. That means they're to confirm their transactions. And that is... That is precisely the, in a very simple term, the scalability issue of Ethereum. Like there are hundreds and hundreds of dApps who want to build their NFTs, DeFi, and all those things on Ethereum. But basically, Ethereum can process only 13 transactions per second, which is like roughly around 200, 250 transactions per block, which is a 15 second block time. So that is the scalability issue. And we want to solve that. It's such an important point when we think about the degree of, uh, you know, focus that Ethereum has gotten, 13 transactions per second, obviously very small uh, compared to what we need to do uh, to get to the demand where we are. So tell us a little bit about what the impact is when you have a limit like 13 transactions per second. Yeah, so like let's take a very simple example of compound or, or Aave protocol. Aave protocol, and these are both DeFi protocols. People want to lend and borrow money on that. Or even an easier example would be Uniswap, which is a decentralized exchange, right? Where you can exchange your tokens and all that. Now, there are roughly, uh, you know, 500,000 to 5 million daily average users on blockchains, right? On Ethereum, I think the DAU is around few million people. And they are trading every day, right? When they are trading... Uh, imagine like there are 1 million users who are trying to trade on this on this blockchain where the chain can only process 13 transactions per second, which automatically means that either, you know, not everyone can be included, so they have to wait. Or if you want to jump the queue, you have to increase the transaction fees. That means you end up paying more transaction fees and then everyone, you know, keeps, uh, you know, increasing their gas fees till the time they get their transaction confirmed. What happens is eventually the gas fees on Ethereum shoot up very high. And why it is a problem is that there were times that, uh, you know, the gas fees on Ethereum became like for one transaction, you have to pay $500. Now, if you are a DeFi user who has a $100,000, $200,000 portfolio and you are making, or maybe even more than that, like millions of dollars, and you are exchanging, uh, you know, let's say $100,000 in a single trade, you might be okay to pay $500. But imagine all the people who have less than $50,000 or $20,000 worth of portfolio. If they right. kind of pay a gas fees of $100, it's already... You know, so they get priced out uh, due to this, right. and due to exactly that, you recently saw this ERC uh, EIP one one five five nine being implemented, which is an attempt to kind of uh, have a, to 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 stop this exponential rise of gas fees in the gas fees in the time of extreme congestion. Uh, it's a complicated method, but yeah, but that's how it impacts the user. Hey, if you like this clip, be sure to check out the full interview and more 
only on realvision.com forward slash crypto. It's 100% free. Sign up now.